What's up, Mets fans? Back at you, Orange and Blue Thing, Season 7, Episode 2. I am Darren Mean, and that's Julia Quadrino. What's up, Julia? What's up? <laughs> Why do you like, like it? It's so weird that, like, there's nothing to laugh at sometimes, and you just fucking crack up. I don't know. I just, I think I still can't take myself seriously doing this. Why? <laughs> I don't know. A hundred episodes in, it's, like, new to you? I guess. I don't know. But thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having uh, thanks for having us. If you're watching from your home, uh, some people treat one inch of snow like it's the end of the world. Uh, we do live in New York, and if you don't live around this area, it did at one point snow. Yeah. And today we got an inch, and it was like the world was sh- fucking shutting down. It was gross this morning. Give I will fu- say. Give me a break. I'm not complaining about it, but I drove to work at like I left at 5:30 this morning, so the roads were still pretty messy because not a lot of driving had okay. taken place, and it was gross. It was fine, but it was like driving in rain. It wasn't icy. I mean, ratings obviously go through the roof whenever there's bad weather. So uh, <laughs> our, my one of our great dear friends, Tara, works for News 12. And Love she Tara. When- Tara advised me. I texted <laughs> Tara this morning. I'm like, is it safe for me to drive oh to Nassau County? Because I could not figure out in my like half dead state what to Google to find the answer. And yeah. she was like, you're fine. Two like, hour delayed was. start for Amelia today. Give me a phone. Really? Break. It's an inch of snow. Well, you know what? If the side streets haven't been cleared, it was slippery and they can't have buses. It's the buses. They don't want a lawsuit. The weather was beautiful down in Port St. Lucie this past weekend. (sighs) Uh, I got to use my drone. I saw. I was very excited. I loved that reel. It was so good. Thank you so much. So I I brought the drone down. We talked about it last week. And I did say, if this is not okay to do, please let (laughs) me know. Someone tell me. Yeah. So I didn't ask. I just went and. Fired it up. Better to ask for around. forgiveness than permission. I, fl- I flew for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. I did a couple different locations. Like you probably can't tell from the video. It kind of looks like all just the front, but I did move to the side for a second. Okay. When I was done packing up, a security guy came over. He's like, hey, uh, you can't fly drones here. I was like, all oh. good. All done. <laughs> <laughs> so it worked out good. If you haven't oh, seen it and good. if you care, uh, I it's like to very be good. a jack of all trades if I can. So I did shoot the video and then instantly go right back to the hotel. And uh, upload it and edit it before the game started. So it could be like an great. opening day. Your content game has really thank you. stepped up a notch this past thank year. You, thank you. I and see ours it. together will be yes. picking it up as well. That's true. During the summer because we're going to be at the ballpark a lot more. Very exciting. I ran into uh, the boys from Met Up. They were down there, which was. Oh, nice. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not shitting on anyone who doesn't go, but it was their first time there. Oh, cool. um, maybe they're also a little bit younger. I always kind of try to feel like everyone's the same. I age. mean, I never went until the seven line started going or at least like our group of friends. I think 2015, I don't think was an official outing. I think a bunch of us just went. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was thinking about this the other day, what the first official game was, Yeah. because uh, I started going down in 2012. And I've went every year except right. for the past two because of what happened with the world. So yeah. this was my ninth my ninth spring training wow. trip so it's almost like you know when you go somewhere uh-huh. and you've been there, like maybe you only go once a year somewhere on right. long island even mm-hmm. when i go there once a year it doesn't feel like like i don't need directions i don't no, need, you know i love that too and I, i'm sad that we stopped going the past couple of years but like it just feels like a family vacation to like start the baseball oh, totally. season totally. and it's very fun but um i could also see like I, I actually I'll take that back because I think I would have fun if I went with like my dad. But like if you're not going with people who are like on the same level of like your fandom, I feel like you have to find the right people to go. And well, in that case, I understand why people haven't gone before if they don't have people who can go with them. Because I wouldn't want to go by myself. Like I know you did for a month, which was bad. I went for two weeks by myself Crazy. the first year. But uh, whatever. Some fun stories came out of it. I went to a couple bar, I, you know, <laughs> whatever. I went to a bar with a player. and oh. shit. It, was, it was pretty cool. But um. We were just talking about this things that you want to do by yourself. You said you might go to this Taylor Swift concert by yourself. Yeah, totally. So that's pretty cool. I, I finally have the funds for yeah. a ticket to, to purchase one ticket, unfortunately. And you, of course, you go on TickPick, <laughs> right? Of course. Obviously, TickPick is the only place I'm getting my tickets. No fees. Um, But I, I really think, like, if I can find somebody else who is my level of, like, feral when it comes to Taylor Swift, I would go with them. But otherwise, I don't want to go with someone who you have to, like, minimize your experience for. And I feel uh-huh. like it's the same thing with spring training. You want to go with people who match the energy so so in that case they understand my parents went down i think they might even still be there uh just getting you know a little vacation baseball was part of it but obviously they're staying a little bit further so they could be near the Good beach but them. my mat my not my math my uh <laughs> my high school art teacher who's basically responsible for all of this wow, was there Oh, that's so cool and I, I went down to where she was supposed to be sitting and i couldn't find her and then she hit me up on instagram and she they left a little early Aww. um it was a little the, the vibe of it was a little bit 
different than what I'd expect because like it, subdued because it was a night game. Okay. And you I know, that would be rowdier. Me too. But, but I guess not in that community. <laughs> we got there on Friday. We had a little bit of a flight delay, which you yes. jinxed me last week. I did not jinx. I just stated the facts of air travel <laughs> right now. Every flight is delayed just so you all know. And we went over to hop life. I was there. I was there an hour after I had planned. So okay. we said That's five, I got there at like six, six thirty, whatever it was. And it was a, not as crazy as it was a couple of years ago. Yeah. And there's two factors for that. We've been doing spring training so often that once you go, well, uh-huh. actually three factors. Once you go, it's like, do I have to do this every year? It's yeah. pretty expensive. Yeah. Number two, the flights just for Kelly and I were 1600 bucks. You're lying. $800 each to get to Florida. So it's like, all right, I could save that and just go to opening day instead. Are you kidding? 1600 bucks for flights. I wouldn't have gone. That's crazy. And three was it being a night game. So a lot of people that go to the spring training do live in the surrounding areas uh-huh. where they drive to the to the town. Like right. let's say live in Florida, somewhere in Florida, you know, let's say you live in Miami an hour south, right? If it's a one o'clock game, you might go the night before. Yeah. If it's a six o'clock game, you have the whole day. Right. So um, yeah, some people didn't show up on that Friday. So the bar was it was still fun. It was yeah. great. Um, but you know, a lot of people maybe just plan for Saturday. Okay. Um, I wasn't going to bring this up. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't. No, please. I love when stories start like this. Spill the tea. It's, I don't know. You know what? I don't want to make the feel. Well, yeah, fuck it. All right. <laughs> so Kelly and I are sitting at the bar, okay. standing at the bar, and we're talking to this couple for like 10 minutes or so. Do, do Kelly and I have like swinger vibes? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because our group text always talks about we swingers. Talk about pi- we only found out about like the whole pineapple thing. We, last we've year. learned a lot about swingers in the past year, but no, I, I wouldn't. I mean, you guys are like a hot young couple. So like well, maybe people young, would be interested, you. but you appear to be a hot young couple. So I don't know, but maybe we're talking to this couple and I we're at the bar and I don't know if you noticed it or not, but this guy was like touching Kelly's back <gasps> while we were talking. And like, I like, like touch, like kind of like, like t- caressing kind of but it wasn't it was weird because she looked at me and she wasn't like like yeah. yeah it was like well kelly's cool she looked at me and she's like <laughs> kind of laughing and like what's going on here yeah. so i said to her, i was like dude like yeah. i just want to know why you're touching my wife's back yeah. like i'm not trying to fight right. someone at hop life <laughs> you know so it was a little strange but anyway that that moved on the wife was like what are you doing like pulled him pulled him to the side and that was it but it was a little it was, got off to a w- wow. little bit of a weird start for a second but what a story to come out of port st lucy yeah, well you know what you kind of expect you ever hear the villages oh yeah the villages That's where, where people lived. like reti- well i met a guy on the plane on the way down mets fan a also swinger? no he goes to the villages just retired he got a second house that he goes back and forth to florida and um i guess he comes from the medical profession and he's like the villages have the highest std rate of anywhere <laughs> in the country at the villages oh, it's all just retired older swingers oh, just trying God, to I can't look at grandpa the same now. Yeah. <laughs> we have some we have some friends who I think their parents might be swingers, but whatever. That's another story. Okay. Anyway, I don't know listen, where we're going with that, but we'll return to that. We're later. all over the map. <laughs> we didn't get to anything on this paper yet, but Keith Rad, the newest yes. Mets Mets play by play by play voice will be joining us in a little bit local guy very excited to have him on the show last year we had keith uh no, jake eisenberg jake. on mm-hmm. who was like in and out i know got the full-time gig I with the kansas jake. city royals yeah. so he's out so uh we will have keith on in a little bit maybe we're the jinx catch up with him yeah you know what let's uh, see what happens to keith after his appearance well, we saw on the janella show. reached out to us last night like wait <laughs> the new guy gets on like maybe you don't want to get on yeah <laughs> Actually, you know what? Maybe you do because that wasn't a downgrade. Jake got a full time. I know. Now. Maybe it's it's a blessing. We're we're the come ste- to us better things. What do they call it? Like a stepping stone. Yeah. We help further your career. Exactly. Just, just like um, uh, uh, Danny Shea. So Danny yeah. Shea worked here, and now he's doing play by play on ESPN Plus. Look so at that! Shout out to Danny Shea. Magic Shay. touch. We're all lines. over the map. If you're watching <laughs> live, we appreciate you checking in. Where are you watching from? Let us know where you're watching from. I do owe our girl. Um, uh, is it? Come on, I'll help you out. Uh, she's a little bit younger. She used to watch Big Apple Trivia. Oh, my God. Well, oh, my God. Why am I blanking? Oh, no. This is so bad. She's going to hate you. I can see her face. No, she's this is so bad. You. This is so bad. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm so sorry. Please don't be mad at me because I, I owe see her your reply face. because she wants to do something for her school. And uh, I told her I would help her out. So we're going to do some kind of interview coming up soon. So let us know where you're watching from. Wait, this is this is so bad. I literally I know, follow right? her on Instagram. I so know I. your name, but I'm panicking. I'm going to figure this out. You you continue. All right, you on so too. shout Hold out on. to Jen. She's watching from Queens. Shout out to Stephanie, our girl Stephanie in Tom's River. We got Clay watching from St. Augustine, Florida. Warren watching from Boynton Beach. Uh, who else we got in here? We got Scott watching from Beverly, New Jersey. 
Oh, it's Gianna. Oh, my God. I was going to say Gabriella. I knew it was with and a she G. Wrote, it's okay. No, Gianna, I love you. And that was humiliating. I, I and have there's it no on, excuse. I have it on the screen. And she says, it's okay. It's me. <laughs> oh, I was going to say Gabriella, but I'm like, I know that's not right. I know it's a G name. I know your last name. It's like like two words. It's like L, like law something. Yeah. But I couldn't. Sorry think about that. Name. And I do owe your reply. I'll get back to you as soon as I Gianna, can. you're a star. And you don't deserve the disrespect we just showed you. I love you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so we're, we're going to get to that. But uh, yeah, so the game was the game. It was fun. They bro- A lot of kids broke out the beach balls, or obviously their parents fun. did. So there's beach balls going around. Dre was there to shoot the photos. If you were there, head on over to our Facebook page and uh, check them out. There's like over 100 pictures there, so feel free to share them and save them and you know tag us and tag Drea. Uh, we always have a fun time down there, so it's nice to kind of get off on the – the right foot with the seasons and uh, you know, head on out there with the, with the crew mm-hmm. and get a first outing under our belt. So it was a lot of fun. Um, have you had a chance to watch any of the games? I know one starts no. today in like 50 minutes. That's why I, we moved the show. I know we did. We moved it up to accommodate everybody else. Um, I have not. <laughs> oh, well, there you, you, go. you would think, I think I mentioned like last week, Oh, no more dog drama. Life's about to get easier. Oh yeah. Um, right. One last curveball at the last minute, the next month of my life is going to be a little crazy, but, other than that, it's great. So, no, I have not had my middle of the days free or that Saturday night free to yeah. watch the game. So, so still waiting on it. I mean, honestly, the so far, the talk, in, at least from where I was sitting, was all about the pitch clock. Yeah. So it that's was, all it I've was, seen, too. It was so – it's kind of not annoying because you'll get used to it, but it stands out so much behind the plate that yeah. from wherever you are, because we're out in the berm, you can see it clear as day um, – the second the pitcher gets the ball back, it starts at 20 right. and then at eight, it turns off. But, um, you know, this is, it really has to be, uh, you know, one of the driving reasons behind the shortness of the game so far. Oh, so totally. So Gelbs put up, um, a couple of days ago after the first three games, the time of the game for the Mets first three spring training games was two hours and 33 minutes, two hours and 34 minutes and two hours and 28 minutes. Wow. So I think someone followed that up like last year, uh, they were normally over three hours. Yeah, each. they're usually, especially spring training games, they're usually like slogs. So many pitching through. changes. And yeah. You know what they don't? What they did down there? They moved the. Um. You know how the the bullpens used to be on, on the, the field. field they're yeah. not. They're in the left field now. Oh, I, that's better. It's safer that way. I yeah. hate when the bullpens are on the field. I liked it. It gives me anxiety that someone's going to get drilled with the foul. Well, ball. yeah. You always have to have the extra catcher standing there as like defense, right. but. Um, selfishly, the reason I liked it was because when they were warming up, you could literally oh, be could like interact. three feet away yeah. from yeah. you know whoever was warming. No, up. it is cool, it's just unsafe, but which was great. Yeah, I'm I'm conflicted on the pitch clock. I truthfully, I think it's so fun, and maybe it's not like authentically baseball to have something be timed, but I really think it's the like, only sport that didn't have a timer. I know, but when you get into those like high leverage points of the game, it's gonna get wild yeah like it's gonna be well, fun i don't know if you, i'm sure you saw it uh and it's the, gonna bite you in the ass and sometimes it's gonna be a awesome game ended the other day I know, because of it i know and it was the batter wasn't even the pitcher yeah, the yeah, batter yeah. the batter wasn't back in the batter's yeah, box and they called the game but tie i also am so cl- conflicted i'm like you know yes i understand you know baseball games should not routinely be like four or five hours long that's excessive but like i also like especially for me, people who don't live close to the stadium, like if you're going to make the trek out there for a game, it's like under the assumption of like, okay, I'm going to spend hours of my day day here. Right. And if like games are done in like two hours, I feel like a lot of people are going to be like, "Eh, well, is it even worth it to go for just two hours kind of thing? Only because of the convenience factor of, well, the inconvenience factor of, like you said. Yeah. So like when I go to a a Knicks game or an Islanders game, you know, shout out to TickPick, that's where I get my tickets when I go there. Uh, I know that it's this is what time I'm typically going to take the train home right. or what time I'm really going to get home. Baseball, it's like, fucking, I know, but also you and, never know. And that's a good and bad thing. Like if you have somewhere to be the next morning, it's a good thing. But like, I know there's talk about moving the start times from 710 to like 640 or something. I'm for it. I know. I truthfully or don't like it. I will hate that because especially if the games are well, shorter, could, because, because of where we live, who, but also people there. who work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like if you're trying to get to the game, if you get out of work at like 5, 530, there's traffic, whatever. If you're getting there late and then the game is over by 8.30 or yeah. 8.45, like, again, I feel like you're going to lose ticket sales that way. So, I don't know. I guess we'll just have to see if it plays out. But I think it is going to be fun for the actual game itself. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, quite a few things changed so far this year. Uh, the pitch clock, the larger bases, yes. the no shift, um, you know, and obviously other things that are just going to stay, like uh, runner starting on right. second and extras and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm not so, a fan of that. Uh, but the biggest one is definitely pitch clock, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. It's, uh, it's a complete the, change to the game. Of course. Max Scherzer came out and he's like, we 
the game is totally different now yeah. and the pitcher holds so much power yeah. uh, of how dictating how fast they want to work, you right. know? So we'll see. I mean, it's going to be definitely interesting. Um, but like you said, we're going to be hanging out in the parking lot like twice as long as the game. Yeah, exactly. But because we want to. Exactly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's a choice. No one's yeah. forcing us. So if you're watching live, we appreciate it. If you're watching on YouTube, we're trying to build it up a little bit more. I never, don't really ever say this because, you know, people end their YouTube videos like smash that subscribe button, hit like. and do it. <laughs> But like if you are watching on, on YouTube, it's, smash that subscribe button, hit, hit subscribe, like, <laughs> hit like, do all that. And if you're watching on Facebook and uh, Twitter, also do the same, share the show and retweet. There's no way for us to keep track of who shares things on YouTube. That's the only reason we don't do the giveaway contest yeah. that way. But this week we have some great giveaways because when we were out there Is on the these? berm, yeah, oh, okay. when we were out there on the berm, people were like taking photos and adding Steve Cohen, like these need to be the city connect. So these were the jerseys that we gave out. It's a little tough to see because of the stellar lighting we have in here, but doing my best. The, uh, the background of the orange is a two tone and it shows the Flushing Meadows Unisphere. And on the back, obviously, the 23. There was a, a whole big debate. I was watching some people in the stands like, why is 23? What does this 23 mean? And it's the year. Yeah, <laughs> one person said, uh, oh, it's how many years this, the, the St. Lucie Mets have had, you know, because they were in St. Pete first. Is it? No. <laughs> But is but like is it correct? Like not that that's what it is. No, is it's that... it's longer than twenty three oh, okay. years. Because I went there as a kid. I was going through some old uh, VHS C tapes, which back in the day, like wow. they had to go into a VHS and it was like a door that would close on yes. top of it. And I went there after Disney when I was like ten. So no, it's that would be thirty two years ago because I'm old as fuck. Damn. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, no, it's twenty three because of the year, and uh, we're gonna be giving away two of these for free. I'm waiting for some leftovers to be shipped up here. Casey from the St. Lucie Mets is a freaking, uh, I don't know what you want to say. She's like an all-star because Love you, Casey. she killed it. She was out there at noon on Saturday in the sun. It was actually hotter than normal down there in Florida. So she oh. was down there uh, distributing at the table with, with the staff and going through the spreadsheet of who ordered what size, this and that. And there was like 1,400 tickets yeah. or something. It was a lot of freaking work. And, Good job, um, Casey. The leftovers are going to get shipped here. So the way that we're going to do it is like we normally do. Share the show. If you're on Facebook, hit the little share button. If you're on watching on, on Twitter, anytime between now, let's say you're listening to it right now, anytime between now and next Tuesday, uh, share the show or retweet the show and you'll be put in the running and you'll win a jersey of your choosing uh, size-wise. So we should have a little extra of each size. You'll get to decide uh, when that comes in. We will get to what I'm wearing a little bit later because this is the first time you're seeing anyone wear the home run apple windbreaker. So cool. People have been saying, when are you going to stop making home run apple stuff? The answer is never, never <laughs> ever, ever. I don't care if people are like, oh, too much home run shit. If it sells out and people want it, we will make it. And uh, again, here on the Spirit table, <laughs> if you didn't see the promo yesterday, this came in. <laughs> Initially, it was going to be just like a resin piece that you'd have on like a shelf. But I was saying to uh, Foco, who helped uh, design it, I photoshopped it all and they, they you know, mocked it up. I don't know how they do it because uh -huh. it's, it's totally 3D uh, as far as like the train in the back. So if we're making this thing, the Apple has to light up and the train lights have to light up as well. Yeah. So they are a little bit pricey. I don't want to dictate the price just yet because, uh, you know, I want people to freak out. But <laughs> we did make 144 of them. And then people are like, why didn't you make more? They're expensive. Let's see if you'll pay for it first. <laughs> they're heavy. They're expensive. The boxes are a specific size. It's a lot of work for us. And again, we have one full-time employee besides myself, Lizzie, myself. Love you, Lizzie. <laughs> and uh, it's a lot of work. So we will see how the 144 go first. They are numbered out of 1,000, but I only have 144 coming in right now. And I then uh, that's how we will go. I said before the show, all of these like little knick-knacky things that are being made, and they're better than knick-knacks, but I don't know another word for it. Not shirts. Accessory. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Knick-knacks is fine. Sure. But, figurines. Um, I think, yes, figurines is better. I feel like whoever collects them all should should make them at Christmas time into like a Christmas village. I feel like it would look so cool to have them just like all lined up together. So just an idea. I think this would be a great addition to a Christmas village if you want it to be. So there we go. Okay, there you go. Little <laughs> Christmas village. Uh, so uh, our boy Keith Rad or our new boy, I'm gonna say, can we even say our boy yet? Is in the waiting our boy room. Boy training. But I do want to get to Tick Pick really quick before we move on. So why don't you tell the people about Tick Pick? Oh, I love telling the people about Tick Pick. Tick Pick is the best place to get your tickets of any kind concerts comedy shows 
uh, obviously sporting events, whatever you need, go to TickPick.com or download the TickPick app. There are no service fees, no hidden taxes, no nothing. The price you see is the price you get. They have an amazing rating system so they can let you know what kind of deal you're getting based off of what the original price was and what the seat is. Um, and also their new price freeze feature said that right this time. Yep. Uh, if you see a price, you like it, but you're not ready to pay for it. It's not payday. You can freeze that price when you come back to it. Even if the price has gone up, you're going to pay that original price. TickPick is the best. Um, use our code OABT to get $10 off any order over $99 in the app for first time users. And yeah, we love TickPick. So without further ado, let's welcome in our newest guest on the show, Mr. Keith Rab. What's up, Keith? What's up, kids? How are we doing? It's a lot colder up here in New York than it was in Florida. I just got back yesterday. So this oh, is Oh, you're back. Get me back. I know I'm going down, uh, going down weekends only. So I'm I didn't really unpack because I'm just like I'm ready to hit it and get back down there. Yeah, what's the point? Leave the stuff in the bag, totally. go back and forth. Uh so did you get to experience I have well, number one, have you ever been down to Point St. Lisa before? Yeah, I went down with my wife last year, uh, and that was a disaster because the lockout was going on. But luckily, oh, yeah. I have such good ties with uh, minor league people. They were still down there, so it was a lot more lively this time. Yeah, a little bit. I sure. mean, I saw you got to experience a little bit on the berm, um, you know, and I appreciate you sharing, like, the story of our crew. And I, I got to say what's up for, to you for a second out there. So, um, you know, we talked for a second because you also did the game, that that the day game, right? And you had said that, uh, unfortunately, you didn't get to call the Brett Beatty home run. That went to Howie. So <laughs> how has it been going so far for you? Yeah, amazing. And I know uh, I was supposed to go to Hop Life on Friday, but it kind of hit me like, your first big league game is tomorrow. Do you really want to be out having a quarter? <laughs> like, no, we need to lock it down. So first game with Howie was uh, a dream come true. Just to, to have the guy sitting right next to you, to hear his voice in your ears as you're doing the game, it's like, oh, my God, this is real. Uh, and then you got to lock in and do it. But uh, it was it was amazing. And then day two was Sunday. That was a little bit more of, OK, I've done this before. It's like riding a bike. A lot of people are watching you ride the bike, but uh, <laughs> just like we've always done it. So it's great. I love how authentic this sounds that we know that you're definitely back in New York. You're not doing this from Port St. <laughs> you Lucie. hear the sirens. I hear the sirens in the back. I love that. <laughs> stuff. No, me too. It's so New York. Great. Yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm uh, Upper East Side, the, the eastern part of the Upper East Side, not the not the bougie part, not yet at least. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of ambulances, a lot of honking. There's like a it's like a Dunkin' Donuts on here that like everybody loves to stop in front of and hold up traffic. So my poor wife's on these corporate calls all day and just eh, eh, just background noise all day long. <laughs> so we know that uh, we, we always love cheering for the local guy, even if the local guy didn't always cheer for us for us. <laughs> but uh, you know, no 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 digs there because obviously Wayne, we we all grew to love him and we know that he was a Chicago fan. So it's no big deal. I mean. Uh, you know, I know some fans in the beginning when that first came out, they may have been giving you a little bit of a hard time on, on the internet because the Cubs aren't exactly the Yankees. But, uh, so Julia, we were talking about this last night. She was saying, or how'd you put it? Like, is a piece of you die? Yeah. Like with <laughs> each Mets related job that you keep getting, does like your inner child die just a little bit or how do you navigate this mentally? So to be honest with you, uh, once you get into this, you start to really look at it from a different perspective. And a lot of the teams that I worked for come out of college. I worked in the Cincinnati Reds organization, the Rangers organization. And little by little, as you're doing this, you start to lose the love of like the brand that you grew up right. watching. Because once you start to meet the people, it, it, it changes things. And to be honest with you, I've, I've put that part of my life behind me, uh, being in the Mets organization since 2018. And when it really started, sorry about the ambulance in the background. This is about <laughs> You're I'll, good. I'll, I love it. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Where it really started to to kind of um, shift totally was when we would actually play like the Staten Island Yankees or the Hudson Valley Renegades, and you're playing Yankees affiliates at the minor league level, and you start to build playing big games against these guys, and you're kind of going, screw you guys, you know, <laughs> like you you switch affiliations a little bit, and that that only becomes. Uh, real when you start to really get to know the players in the Mets organization, the trainers, the coaches, and you start to really root for the family that I now feel like I've been adopted into. So listen, they have a great thing going over where they are, but I'm very happy and I'm very, very present with the New York Mets. And I'm a New York Mets fan. All my all my boys text me over the weekend. Hey, your first game, like we're going to listen. I'm like, what time are you on? I'm like one o'clock. You're like, yeah, we'll be watching the Yankees. So like, you know, they, they're giving me crap for that too. So uh, they've been doing that for a couple of years already. So how many how many years were you with the Cyclones? Uh, since 2018. So this would have been uh, year six. I mean, we didn't have the the, the COVID year. We lost a season. Right. So year five. But it's you a got long to time. see you know quite a few guys move up the chain from you know Brooklyn to here. Um, is there anyone in particular that maybe 
throughout the years you 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 followed and uh you know they are with the big team now that you kind of already always saw it coming like you knew that they were were made for this they were going to make it to the bigs right uh so really the the most recent one is is brett brett Beatty. um just getting to know him i mean tyler mcgill was my first uh first cyclone team in 18 but i think as the the as we learned the big drip uh he's kind of known as being a super quiet let's keep it that way so i never really got to know no Tyler, uh, even though he was extremely talented, throwing, you know, he's like 6'8", 250 pounds, throwing 97. You could kind of see that coming. But I think Brett was kind of the first one, first big number one prospect that I had been around. Uh, getting to know him, uh, I, I kind of told the story on the air that when he hit his first big league home run in Atlanta, uh, we were doing, I was doing a Cyclones game, you know, in Brooklyn, and one of the Mets staffers was watching the, the Mets-Braves game on an iPad, and I'm calling the game and watching Brett's first at bat, and... Uh, I'm calling a pitch and talking about, you know, the other game. It's just terrible broadcasting one-on-one. And then I call a pitch and I, I look back and I see Brett rounding the bases, rounding first. I'm getting chills now as I talk about this, but, uh, and then they shoot over to his family and then it says home run. And I just like, I got super choked up because I was like sitting at a field where this kid was last year, um, just kind of figuring it out and now he just hit his first big league home run in his first at bat it was like such a baseball thing that only happens in baseball uh just very happy for him and he was kind enough this past week it was good to see everybody again down in florida and it was the first time i had seen everybody since getting the new job so uh he came over gave me a big hug and said congratulations so it was it was really nice i mean i it's, he sounds like a legit mets fan now i think <laughs> we can keep him no, I mean, I've been working for the team for a while. I was going to say, <laughs> I, I think he's good. He's been my checks for a couple of years, so it wasn't hard to, uh, yeah. <laughs> to come over full time. I think he's good. I think we can keep him. Yeah. So other than Brett Beatty, are there any names that, that maybe aren't as big that maybe we don't know about, or maybe we do, that you think we should keep our eyes on that you've seen that maybe fans aren't talking so much about? That they didn't get here yet. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, we've seen what Ronnie Mauricio could do a little bit. Everybody kind of knows his name a little bit. There's some there's some really young guys. Alex Ramirez is super toolsy, young kid, uh, about 20 years old, extremely confident kid out of the Dominican Republic. Uh, he's really flashy. This kid, William Lugo, is a really good hitter. And then some pitchers that we might see soon. Uh, Josh Walker is one of the, the, the best guys all around. Uh, lefty, he's, uh, he's from New York. And then this kid, Grant Hartwig, who's having a, a really – Nice come up through the system, undrafted kid, kind of forgotten about. Uh, flew all the way from us, actually with Lowe St. Lucie, all the way up to AAA last year. So some of those B-side, C-side deep cut players, uh, yeah. I certainly know them. I saw them all weekend. <laughs> so those are just a couple of them that are on the way. Yeah, I was running into, I ran into uh, a group of three guys. I, I wish I would have asked their names, but they're clearly players. I asked them, say, hey, you know, good luck. But they were, had like this ongoing game. I don't know if it was like Monopoly or something, but the only the two nights that I was there on Friday and Saturday, they were sitting in the lobby both nights playing the same game, <laughs> sitting in a circle and like trying to, you know, I guess Minor it's like an life. ongoing game. Yeah. But, you know, they definitely go through the grind and we saw how long it took even guys like McNeil to get up. So, totally. uh, you know, there's definitely some gems waiting in the wings. So, um, you know, I I used to pass. You went to Chaminade, right? Yeah, I did. Yes, yeah, so Chaminade yeah. High School was that like New Hyde Park, Mineola area or something like that. Mineola, yep, Mineola. Yeah, so our 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 warehouse for our printing facility is still in New Hyde Park. So I passed Chaminade all the time, and and then I was reading a little bit on about your bio the other day uh, before we knew we were going to have you on. You went to Chaminade. So um, I read something there that said you know you, you kind of thank your high school experience for um, you know you realizing that like you had a knack for public speaking and this and that. So is that where like you kind of decided you wanted to be a broadcaster? Is that where it started in high school? Uh, that's kind of where I, I learned that my, you know, what my God given skills were kind of reading, writing, speaking, all that stuff. I didn't realize I, want, I wanted to do this until I got to college. But yeah, Chaminade was great. I would, I would hang out there, obviously, during school, and I would, you know, suit up and learn everything that possibly could learn. And then I'd go back to Valley Stream on the weekends where I grew up. And that was kind of the street smart experience that I that I um, uh, lived, which you know, at Chaminade, they teach you how to be a professional. They teach you the, the high standard of life. And and then you go back on the weekends and you throw a hoodie on and a, and a backwards hat and you hang out with you know, the, the everyman kind of thing. So that uh, ability uh, always helped me just kind of communicate with a bunch of different people. And I had my family. My dad's side is kind of super old and sorry, everybody on my dad's <laughs> side. But you learn how to communicate with people that who are 60 and 70 years old when you're 10 and 11. And then that just all gets wound up into one big concoction that is, I guess, me now and, and being able to, my new best friend is Howie Rose, who's 69 years old. That's 40 <laughs> years older than I am. 
So I have to be able to hang with Howie and he's got to be able to hang with me. Okay. So I dropped a Super Smash Bros. reference this weekend. That didn't kind of land with him, even though he was he was playful <laughs> with it. But all those things certainly help to now like to be able to hang out with him on the air. Oh, yeah, it's got to be excellent. Howie became like a great friend of the brand. And, you know, I did a couple things with him over the years, you know, uh, T-shirts and, and he was on our show once. We love but, Howie. Uh, I hit him up yesterday, you know, humble brag that I could hit up Howie. But so I, to Howie's DMs. a lot of times when we have guests on, we like to ask previous guests or friends of the show to ask uh, our current guest, which is yeah. you, a question. So, so this should have been Tony Tacoma, but we hijacked it with Howie. Yeah, Tony was on last Sorry, week. Sorry, Tony. <laughs> but I just said a Howie instead. So I asked him if there was anything maybe funny we should ask you or anything interesting. And he said something about uh, he doesn't remember the, all the particulars, but you went golfing once with your dad or something and you hit some incredible shot as a kid, but like you don't even know how to golf or something. Uh, tell us about that. Now we need to know. Yeah, so my dad owned a travel agency and he was big into to charity events and stuff. So he would drag me to, you know, he needed a foursome and he would drag me out there as like a 12 year old kid to, to help play. And, you know, you show up and all the older guys and women are like, who's this kid playing with like adults at this nice charity event? So there was one particular one up in Sands Point. I think I have no idea what the exact, exact course was. And there's a putting contest beforehand, a bunch of different games and stuff. So uh, all these older adults are playing, the, doing the putting contest. And I, I sink three putts in front of the whole place. And everyone's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. This kid just won the putting contest. <laughs> Great. So I go out, play 18. I'm 12. Balls are going this way. Balls are going that way. I shoot like this horrible score. Get done with it. Get through it. And uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the event, there was this, you know, this dinner and award ceremony. And they give out the certificates for best drive and putting contest. So. They go, okay, uh, putting contest winner is, and they read Keith Rad. And through this sea of like 50, 60, 70 year old people, here comes this little weasel 12 year old kid up to, <laughs> up to the dais. And they're like, oh my God, they see me emerge. They're like, you won the putting contest? How old are you? And I'm like, yeah, 12. They're like, wow, you must be a prodigy. And I go, <laughs> and they go, what'd you shoot out there? And I go, I don't know, 120. And he goes, ah, you suck. <laughs> 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 yeah, I always say I want to pick up golf. They they built a top golf out here. We both live in Suffolk County. Yeah. And uh I went once. It was fun. But I, again, like most of the time I hit the ball and it lands either like on my head or at on the you It know. never even <laughs> registers for me. I get so frustrated. Adam. So I understand the golf struggle. <laughs> Good you stick with baseball. So let me ask you, we uh we know that Howie doesn't uh doesn't make every road trip anymore, but uh you're on for all 162. Is that how it's gonna go? Yeah, all, all 162. And then uh, Pat McCarthy, who's actually going to be on with us this weekend for the first time. Pat and I will kind of do the, the bulk of games that Howie misses. So uh, we'll certainly miss him on on those. I think it's 40 or 42 games that, that he'll be missing this year. But uh, well, a lot of these trips are like, I mean, obviously you were wrapped up in Brooklyn. Did you get to travel a lot? Have you hit? Uh, is, is your t first time going to like San Diego this year? Your first time going to San Diego, for instance? Or how's that? Yeah, going? yeah 100%. I mean, right, right there in April, we're doing Oakland, the Dodgers and the Giants. So like, welcome to the uh, big leagues kind of thing. So yeah, all of it's, all of it's crazy. I mean, Oakland's, I've never seen it. Oakland's a uh, piece of crap. You're not, you're <laughs> Oakland's like the worst ballpark you've ever seen. There might be more people at a Brooklyn Cyclones game than potentially at the Oakland athletics game. Not to take anything away from my, my friends in Brooklyn, but, but yeah. you know, you know, what's crazy, not crazy, but like, you know, with the seven line, we get other fan bases that follow us that we just became friendly with from talking on the internet and stuff. And uh, MLB came out or someone came out the other day and said, you know, there might be a possible expansion and the Oakland A's might have to move or might move to Las Vegas. Uh -huh. And I just commented on it like, wow, imagine a seven line army outing in Vegas. And the Oakland A's fans turned on me so quick. Like, <laughs> how could you be happy that we're losing our team? And I'm like, I'm not happy about it. I'm just commenting it was on just an imagine that I'm commenting on this news story right. that this there might be a new team in Vegas. Like all sympathy to you guys. I'm sorry that. You may have to move, but they got so mad at me. <laughs> so you, don't piss off the Oakland fans, I guess, is the moral of the story. Yeah, which yeah. there are many, many diehard Oakland fans. I mean, yeah. I feel bad for them. You know, their <laughs> ballpark's falling down and, uh, you know, you got to feel bad. Well, I don't know if this is still true, but when he signed, I'm pretty sure Trevor May was the <laughs> highest paid player on the athletic. Yeah, I feel bad for Trevor May because the other day, well, it's hard to feel bad for guys making millions of dollars, but the other day, you know, Mets uh, had their photo day. You know, they do the smoke machines and they do this. They made the fake deli last yeah. year. Uh, Trevor May put something up uh, of his photo day and it's like he's just holding a piece of paper in the regular ass locker room <laughs> with like a gray backdrop. And I'm like, wow, the photo day that he had what last a downgrade. year to this year is, is crazy. But yeah. Um, yeah, so we appreciate you giving us a couple minutes and uh, we're really looking forward to listening to you on the radio. I'm, I'm 
personally, I'm one of those guys that likes to, if I can, sync up the app, the Odyssey app or, or whatever, the radio with the TV and kind of mute the TV. Not when Gary, Keith and Ron are on, but, you know, we get the B squad, the, the, the Fox games yeah. and the ESPN games. And uh, we're really looking forward to you. And we appreciate you uh, giving us a few minutes. Well, let's see when when Wayne Randazzo was doing Apple TV and it's a Mets game. That'll be the <laughs> real deciding factor. Hey, are we listening to Wayne or are we listening to the radio here? I, I was like this last week. I had to. Un- I think I did. I had to unfollow Wayne. No offense to Wayne, but like, I don't like. You know, I hope you. I hope honestly, I hope that this is the first conversation of many that we're going to be talking to you in like forty years and yes. you're still with the Mets. But when people move on. Wayne was great with us. Right. But I don't want to You know don't care about his content the, anymore. The A's lineup. Yeah. You know, like, I'm sorry. So either I have to mute the old guys uh, or uh, unfollow. So. so the point is, if you want to keep that follow from Darren, <laughs> stick around for a few years. <laughs> All right. It was nice. It was really great to see you guys. This is amazing. And uh, I love it. The seven line is is a sea of orange. And it was, it was amazing to be out there with you guys on, on Saturday night. So. Looking forward to a great season. Appreciate Thanks, it. Man, we appreciate it. And then, uh, we'll, we'll listen uh, to you this weekend. All right. Have a good one. Thank you. All right. Bye. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, okay. He's cool. <laughs> he, yeah, of he course. <laughs> well, we knew he was cool. I know. But still, <laughs> you get the new guys coming in. They grew up a Yankees fan. You never know if like the vibe is going to be genuine or just like, you know. Well, we seems... talk about this too with the players too. Like, the like, of course, we know the story of the rights growing up in Norfolk, of Virginia. Course. And Most stuff. people it's don't grow up fans of the team. Rare. I get it. Very totally. rare. I think it's also just the fact that he's from Long Island. And I know so many, any like we're, I think we're similar in age. I know so many douchey Long Island Yankee fans <laughs> that like, you just have to read the vibe of the person and yeah. he seems fine. So that's good. So we glanced over this last week and I, I don't even know how, because uh, we were saying what was the biggest off season story of yes. the season. And um, what did we miss? Keith being back with SNY. Oh, yeah. so, well, that also just happened. Like, well, yeah, we kind of knew it was going to happen. I don't know if like the leak was Keith straight to Puma, but Puma was like on top. Mike of it. Puma, who works for the Post, was basically like writing like the the sides are close, but like they're not ready to make and a it deal. Was just him. <laughs> yeah, I think it was just like Keith was talking to Puma, and yeah. Puma was tweeting it. Yeah, but having Keith back is is obviously something that Thank God. Um, some people were saying was the biggest move of the off season. I I. And again, like I think they're on year 18 now. I know. And like I I am young in the grand scheme of like their career. 18 years ago for me, I was what nine? Four. I'm 27. You're not far off, but I was young. <laughs> so like I have such the strong opinion of like if one of them is gonna like I need them to all leave together. I can't imagine like Gary and Ron with somebody else, or Gary and Keith with somebody else, or Ron and Keith with somebody else. It just needs to be all or nothing for me. So thank God. I mean, Keith they have the back. fill-ins, they have the zeal of approval. Once yeah, but in a that while. and that's Gary fine Apple. once in a while, but not yeah. my permanent experience. No, 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 no. No, I think like you said, it's all or nothing. If one's out, it's like the if the band's gonna stay together, it's yeah. gonna stay together. They can't have a fill-in singer, you know. Totally. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But I did reach out to uh, SNY, and I don't think. This is out of line for me to say, but I would like to have Keith on the show at some point. So I think I know Keith doesn't do many things like this. Yeah. So I thought it was going to be like an automatic no. Right. But I got a we- maybe. I got a maybe. So you're saying there's a chance. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I got a, I initially got a maybe. And then I was like, hey, no pressure. But like this is for last week. Yeah. Um, And it didn't work out. But then I got a reply like, hey, he's we talked to him about it. He's into it and maybe more towards the season. So okay. if you want to circle that Tuesday before open the real opening day in Miami. Hopefully that's the day we have Keith on. So that's that's the day. Keep, keep your fingers crossed. Somebody leaked this to Puma, one. so he tweets about Puma it. Puma tweet about it. <laughs> so we will see. But I did leak out yesterday. Not really leak. I just showed it off. So uh, you saw that shirt. We were doing it in the group chat. Yes. You were saying uh, maybe keep traditional blue and orange. No, but- no, no. I it didn't need to be the right colors. I was nervous that in a sea of people, because the colors of we're talking about the Miami outing shirt. Yes. The colors are this really cool, like a turquoise and like a pink instead of blue and orange, because those are the Miami colors. Right. Which is sick. And I totally get it. I was just thinking well, the Marlins maybe- don't use pink. Right. So, but that's just a Miami right, 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 color. Right, 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 right. So I was going to say maybe just, and also just for the purpose of people wanting to match their clothes with all like the Mets accessory hat yeah, they yeah, have. Yeah. Maybe like a light orange instead of a pink. But honestly, it looks pretty cool. It would look I a little weird. Admit. I tried it, uh, you know, mocked it up it's a few different ways. But if you're right. watching live, if you're not watching live, uh, just go over to any of our social channels. And I put up a little video yesterday, which you probably have no idea what that song is in the background. 
I don't think I listened to it with sound. Okay, well, I I it's from public. Scarface, uh, which I don't know if you've ever even seen Scarface. No. But there's the shirt. It says Queen South. On the top, it says the Sevillon Army takes Miami. Queen South in uh, pink with white outline and a blue drop shadow, royal blue. And this is opening day 2023 on there. So if you've seen the... Uh, uh, the heat, Miami Heat. They do a like a city connect once in a uh -huh. while, and it looks like that with that same colors. Okay. The Marlins did a teal, but it was like teal, black, white, and like I don't know what other color it was. But right. people are saying you're gonna blend in, but the kind of there's a double edged sword with this. Uh -huh. I did want to appeal to like Miami South Beach that type of vibe with the colors. But number two is by having Queens South on the shirt. To who what if there are any Marlins fans that are gonna be there? They're gonna be like, wow. They're yeah. taking over our ballpark. They're writing, basically saying like, this is, Their we're saying like, stadium. this is our house yeah. for the day. And you know what? So it, it's like an ultimate troll it job. It is good because in Florida, like I, and I really don't know this. If like, you know, people from other states, fans from other states or whatever, if it's like general knowledge that the Mets play in the borough of Queens, I don't know. I feel like it is for me, but I don't know if it is. But Florida is the perfect place to do that because yeah. everyone's from New York. Everyone knows exactly what it means. Yeah, yeah Queens yeah. South. We tried years ago on our first trip to uh, Philly to write City Field South. And uh, MLB or someone said that's not allowed but because I guess it's it's because it's like false. Hour. It's not right. People would take it literally. It's not really City Field South. And City is probably trademarked you know so CITI. Silly. so i figured we're our season ticket jersey this year says queens on the front i was like fuck it queens south yeah, like, yeah that's yeah. what we're going with so if you haven't seen yet go over to our social channels i mean i just popped it here but if you're listening and you can't see with your ears go to uh watch the show or hit up our social channels and check it out so a lot of people like you said like to match their their hats or their yes. shoes you gotta have to put some some thought into this one with i the, think with this if you still rock go like with a, the black a, stuff a royal blue hat still yeah. is gonna be fine or black. black is a neutral color yeah i say to use your black gear to match i mean it's gonna be undeniable who we're rooting for when there were, <laughs> were two thousand people yeah so uh hit up the site and uh get involved in the season uh, let me add this to the stream really quick. Why is that still on there? Not that, sure. That doesn't make sense. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. So um, that's for the party cruise. Sorry, guys. Scroll down on the seven line uh, dot com and hit the little blog button at the blog, the join button on the top. And you can see our whole schedule for the season. So obviously opening day in Miami is sold out. Opening day at home is sold out. The three games in May are still up. There's not that many left. So if you want to join us at City Field in May, Go to Mets.com slash the seven line army and all our games are there sold for the home games. As far as the next road trip, that is Philly. And I'm oh here boy. to announce today that the Philly game will go up on Tuesday, March 21st at 10 a.m. So set an alarm now if you're listening wow. to this or if you're watching this afterwards, set an alarm now. Tuesday, March 21st at 10 a.m. We have fifth, over 1,500 tickets for this one. And uh, that game is on June 24th. So just about three months out. So we like to sell games about three months before. It just makes the most sense as well, far that's as like three months away. That's crazy. Well, well, no, because March 20, whatever but is still. a few weeks from now. So it's about four months four from, months, but from still. now. But I'm going to Belize later that week. So you better it, Belize it. <laughs> have you ever been? You gotta Belize. Has you ever, have you ever been to Belize? No. I've been to Belize. Have you? Yeah. I went, I stopped on a, a cruise once. Okay. And when you get off and you're in like the port area, they saw like all the crap. Uh -huh. And every single thing is a play on Belize. Oh, I love it. Shirts, bottle openers, like basically Homer and Apple of Belize. That's is so cool. I got to get, I got to find it. You got to Belize. You better Belize it. Love it. Unbelievable. But yeah, I go there that week and I like, I booked the trip last May. So the fact that it's this soon is kind of wild to me, but I think I'll try and make that Philly trip. I would love to. I don't know if I could take off work because I'm going to take off a week. Never mind. There's no way I'm in for Philly. <laughs> so Philly's going to be fun. <clears throat> I know. I, 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 hate fun. Minute, I hate missing the Philly trip because it's it's always fun. Like, not that we try to rile up other fans, but if you're going to go to any stadium as the seven line army and rile up other fans without even trying, it's it's Philly and it's fun. Yeah. Philly's the, Philly's Philly is what it is. Philly I'm hoping, is Philly. I'm hoping for another day game. Last year, I ended up working out where it was a day game. And uh, we had a fun time because it was a double header, actually. Yes, I remember so that. So we ended up going to the first one. I had tickets to the second. We we're like, are we going to do this or not? And we ended up going to both. Yeah. Mets won our outing and lost the night game. So that was unfortunate. But um, yeah, so set an alarm now and get involved because it is going to be a fun time. So I had this on my notes last week and I forgot to play some of them. But 
our boy Real Black <laughs> is back. Well, he never really left. He's been doing stuff all, <laughs> all, all off season as well. But I wanted to highlight this because we like to play some of his little jingles here every once in a while. And he had a couple that he DM'd me um, <laughs> that I was going to play. Exclusive drops. Not exclusive because he, he shared them, but he makes a video for everything. I love it. Which I love. Committed to the you know content. You know how many people that I, I, as I scroll down, you know how many people th thought that when uh, Kodai signed here, Senga, okay. uh -huh. that the Sega design was like their idea. <laughs> I got DMs from like, oh, I think you should make this As Senga no one instead of Sega. Of I was like, yeah, you're like the 30th person. What's going on here? Oh, is this a good one? We don't like it. Samuel Coonrod, Samuel Coonrod. Sorry, don't like, but he really, really hates it. Samuel Coonrod, Samuel Coonrod. So, like, who else is making a song about Coonrod? <laughs> Nobody. Zero people. At what point does he run out of songs? Has he ever recycled? Never, ever. He, he's balling. Oh, that's Pete. He's balling. So that's for a Pete Alonzo home run. What's this one? When he hits the ball, I feel a more. Oh, so he ran his own bracket last year. Of <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even see this. I respect this man so much. Okay, wait, hold on a minute. So we're on the screen. Oh, we're cut on the screen. So he made his own bracket of his like top songs of the year. And uh, let people vote on it. Which songs were the best? And I didn't know that. Which one was the best? What I don't was know. The final let's, one? let's listen to one more, and you can go back and see what the what the best one was that you. You think. be the judge. Hold on. I can't. I don't know if I should play that because it might get taken down. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it shot me like your Jeff McNeil. There's there's so many. There's a million here. He sent me some of the best ones after we signed different people like, uh, you know, um, what's this one? Hold on. All right. This is for a Jeff McNeil. Neil. I'm sure you heard the news by now, baby. Oh. oh, yeah. In case you haven't heard, though. In case you haven't heard. Say, oh, girl. We extended Jeff McNeil. Baby girl. Woo! <laughs> I'm sure. I just want there to be a I mean, day I can... where everyone's walk-up song is like a rendition, a rendition of him singing their name. Well, into honestly, some song. like our show's usually an hour. I could just sit there and play his songs for an hour <laughs> and be really totally cool. With it. Orange and black thing. <laughs> yeah, orange and real black thing. Fourteen. Uh, so wait, there's three more here that he did send me. Hold on. Uh, let's do one more here and then be done with this. Hold on. Let me open this up. Okay, hold on. Uh, what is that picture? What's going on? There's no sound. Shoulders oh. off, Met fans is. I got you. Uh, yeah. If you feeling like a Met fan, go and brush your shoulders off, ladies and gents, man. Go and brush your shoulders off. Met fans is crazy, baby. Don't forget your boy. We just got Justin Verlander. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great one hopefully we're not getting flagged for this music because facebook's so freaking strict oh my god and i just realized what the picture was too yeah what's that what was that like a selfie like no a... years ago justin verlander and kate upton's nudes leaked and that was one of the leaked nudes but was, it was it puma <laughs> puma leaked the nudes no i don't know but that photoshopping a mets hat on it was just an iconic choice so yeah. great all right. Anyway, so we are going to get to the share contest from last week, which was free uh, gift cards, free gift cards for last week's winners. Was free... it gift cards? Last week was T7L gift cards. And okay. today is uh, sure. It, it wasn't the sunglasses. No, no, no. We were oh, that promoting was the, the sunglasses, okay, okay. Sorry. which are gone. No sunglasses for you. Sorry. You no get a gift card. sunglasses for you. Gift cards <laughs> for last week's winners, which I did not contact yet because 
Facebook made some kind of change in yeah, there. Facebook. No, no, seriously, which is also why I didn't tell you. We, you can't watch the full show on Instagram anymore. Oh. So that which I don't really feel like that many people open up the Instagram I don't app think so either. for an hour. No. So we're gonna do like a little clip here and there, which basically promotes a the teaser. show. Yeah, like we did last week with Tony. Yeah. So uh we'll pick something from today, put it on Instagram, and then you obviously know where to watch the show. So um yeah, but Facebook changed something where I can't DM people that straight from like the seven lines page oh, i have to, to do it like from like personal. my personal which i did for like years yeah but it was kind of annoying because i don't really go on facebook that yeah, often yeah. so i'm going to basically rattle off these names and unfortunately i'm going to have to leave it on you on facebook to hit us up which i'm sorry but that's the way we got to do it <laughs> um, maybe when you tweet the show or post the show later you can include their names in it and like tag them and maybe the they'll winner see it. yeah all right cool yeah good idea it. we'll put it in the caption okay all right so uh last week's winner on twitter is at NB Frey, which I can DM. So NB Frey, I'll send okay. you a gift card for the Seven Lines website. And on Facebook, it is Derek Silva. So Derek hey, Silva Derek. and NB Frey. Derek, hit us up. Or if you see this, whatever, let us know that you won and we will send you something for free. Uh, uh, well, not something. It's going to be a gift card. <laughs> um, so uh, I wanted to do this one more time because you know what? Stop. Do you know how many people that I talk to down in Port St. Lucie that say they love watching the show? Can because... I tell you I'm so mad I didn't get Damien Easley? I feel like I, I I don't know why I thought, no offense to Damien Easley, I thought it was going to be like somebody more significant. So okay. I wasn't thinking of like, uh, again, this is an awful thing to say, but like the scrub level of Mets, just like the bottom tier. Um, uh, it's a Met? Yes, of okay. course. These are all Mets cards. Oh, they're all Mets cards. Okay. I yes, thought it was yes, just like yes. generic baseball cards. Um, you have to give me somebody I know, though. Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple different. Uh, you're gonna get this right away because of the uh, of the guesses here. Don't so say that. If you didn't watch last week, I got a, a gift set of baseball cards for my daughter for Christmas, and I am gonna ask Julia who they might be just from reading the backs of the baseball cards. So I don't even have my glasses, but New York Mets second baseman. This card is from 2017. Oh God. <laughs> In 16, he played for the Mets. In 12, 13, 14, and 15, he played for the Pirates. Neil Walker. Yes. Okay. I was going to say daddy. <laughs> <laughs> daddy. Yeah. So Neil Walker is the second card of the season. And uh, no one in the comments got it before you. I still owe someone from last week, but whatever. Are you coming to the party cruise? I can't. I have my brother's wedding the next day in North Carolina. So I'm okay. going to be traveling out to North Carolina. <laughs> I'm, I'm never in the state when yeah, you plan fun not, things. I, you know, I we've talked about it. I just feel like you don't want to hang out with us. No, you don't consult me when you make these dates. And then there's always something significant in my life happening that I can't come. So. All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> if you didn't buy your tickets yet, the party cruise is going to be nuts. It's the day after opening day. So if you're flying to New York for opening day and you're staying for the weekend, you got nothing to do on Friday. Join us. We are going to be leaving from the World's Fair Marina, which is right next to City Field cruising around the empire state building not the, the statue of liberty <laughs> <laughs> cruising around Manhattan. the statue of liberty and back dinners included open bar it's basically like a, a a wedding setup so they put out the 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 buffet style chafing dishes they have the desserts afterwards there's three decks the top deck is a um is a like a uh, dance floor and the dj's up there and the first and second floors also have bars but mainly for music i'm not, not music mainly for the food so Fun. it is 116 dollars a pop everything's included bring some scratch for the bartenders uh so you can give them a little tip and uh yeah everything's included so it's a great time 116 bucks go to the sevenline.com click on the seven line army area and scroll to the bottom you'll see a button that says party cruise click that and all the information will be there the boat holds 500 people we didn't sell out yet uh i think that we might or we probably will i know that it also is good friday so if you uh if you're religious and you don't want to do anything on Good Friday, that's 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 up to you. But if not, uh, join us because it's going to be a fun time. So looks like fun. Mets game starts in a little bit. Uh, head on over and uh, watch that. It's going to be on SNY today in, in six minutes from now. I don't even know who's pitching or who they're playing against. But the Mets seem to play like the Marlins, the Cardinals, or the Astros like close. every day. Yeah, because yeah. they're right there. Right. Or the Braves because they're a little bit more north in Orlando. So. Watch the game. Should be a fun time. Shout out to Keith Rad for coming on. I love that name, by the way. Rad. Such a cool name. I like you don't Keith know about Rad, this either, Holly but Rose. Rad was a BMX movie from back in the day. And okay. like, the word Rad is just pretty cool. So that's like, a pretty cool name to have. Pretty rad. There's a guy that races uh supercross. His name is Nate Thrasher. And it feels like that's fake. Sick. It sounds fake. No, that's sick. You gotta be like a badass and like a tough kid to have yeah. the word Nate Thrasher. You know, there's no like 
nerd, nothing against nerds. I mean, they make the world go around, <laughs> but like, you're not meaning like a nerdy little kid named Nate Thrash. No, I know. My middle school boyfriend's middle name was Blaze. Oh, look at you, boyfriend. <laughs> Look at you having a boyfriend in middle school. There go the follows on follow. That's fair. If I could turn back time, <laughs> Julia had a boyfriend in middle school. Nick, if you're watching this, hope you're doing well in life. No, I'm trying for real black to take me under his wing. No, 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 thanks. Wait, who's watching this? My my middle school boyfriend. His name was Nicholas Blaze. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was what I was getting at. His middle name was Blaze. It was Good a cool name. name. Yeah, Nicholas Blaze. Good name. Yeah. Well. And your follower count just went down. <laughs> How Probably. dare you have a history? I think Nick still follows. Maybe he'll unfollow me after this. We're name dropping him. Whatever. All right. We're being crazy now. Um, so share the show. If you're watching on YouTube, smash that like button, subscribe, tell your friends, uh, <laughs> do all the other stuff that you got to do in order to get the free jersey because we never sell them. We get hit up constantly from people either at the games or afterwards. Like, where can I get that jersey? Where can I get that event t-shirt? You can't. They're never sold separately. So we will have extras mailed to us from Casey, who's a rock star down at St. Lucie Mets. Love you, Casey. And uh, the winners from this week will get selected next week, and you'll get a free jersey. So shout out to TickPick. Again, don't forget, get your tickets from TickPick. They're the best. We love them. Mets tickets, Knicks tickets, Islanders tickets, Nets tickets. Taylor Swift Taylor tickets. Taylor Swift <laughs> tickets. Anything you want to go. There was Flogging Molly played at uh, the Paramount. On Sunday night, I was thinking about being a maniac and landing from Port St. Lucie wow. straight to Foggy Mountain. I didn't do it, <laughs> but I did check Tick Pick, of course, to see if they had tickets available, which they did. So check them out. Use the promo code OABT ten dollars off any order of ninety nine dollars or more in the app. You could also do it on the on the website, but download the app. It's super easy to use, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much it. Yeah. See you guys next week. Let's go Mets. Twenty nine days till opening day at one o'clock next week, right? I don't know. We'll talk about we'll it. See. See you guys next week. Definitely Tuesday. Let's go Mets. Thanks to Keith. Thanks to TickPick. Thanks to Mike Puma. Thanks to Mike Puma for leaking <laughs> Justin Verlader's uh, nudes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. What are the books? Books. Uh, Skeet it up. Stop it up to... <laughs> oh, my God. You'd think that like we do some kind of drugs before the show, but we don't. I feel like like halfway through the show, I feel like something is coursing through my veins. Like the it's lights not... have like... <laughs> the uh, lights. You it's know, the club lighting. Acid in them or yeah. something. <laughs> acid Whatever. lights. All right. Turn this off. See you guys. <laughs> Bye. From the books.